Good morning, everyone. Dev and Naomi are back together again. We broke up for a while, but... <laughs> They're going to actually believe that, you know. <laughs> <We're b> <laughs> what, I mean, what I mean by this is we haven't done uh, Dev and Naomi talks about TV or movie or whatever since, I think, House of the Dragon. Was That's because you're lazy. Because you're lazy, too. I, I am lazy in my own way. Well, you're then you can't even complain. No, no, you're lazy when it comes to your work. Listen, okay? That's not true, and you know it. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's what you get. Stop. <laughs> so we have our morning coffees. It's reasonably early in the morning for us. And, uh... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm. We have our coffees, and we're going to be here to talk about Star Trek Picard Season 3. Episode 1! Uh, okay, so here. Let me give you the TLDR, all right? When I first met Naomi, she didn't know what Star Trek was. Yep. And I was like, you know what? I think you'd actually like it. Even though it's not like... You thought before me it was like a, just another generic sci-fi action series, right? Yeah, because hashtag Star Wars was always bad. <laughs> is that, how is that related? Because <laughs> that's another generic sci-fi series that was, you know, really popular that what, I didn't know you're that much more about. You're getting more beatings for that. Here, <laughs> here they are. Here they are. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> okay. So listen. Um, but Star Trek is not a generic sci-fi action series. It has action. Yeah. But it's also like, it's kind of comedic. It's kind of dramatic. But it's like a procedural, you know? Yeah. And it's a very good procedural. Yeah. It probably, it, it basically started the genre of what it is. Yeah. It's like... Wait, what it, other shows are like Star Trek? That are not Star Trek yeah, related. Like, like, like <laughs> other Star Trek shows? <laughs> and the Orville doesn't count. Well, because it's a Star Trek parody, yeah. right? Yeah. The Orville doesn't I guess count. it is kind of something. Well, here's the thing. If you go back really far, like before Star Trek, you can find stuff like um, Flash Gordon, which is very much, which is very similar. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it it was that way because that was like a, a black and white convention mm -hmm. and they couldn't really do what they could do with tech. But with, with Star Trek, I don't know. Like there's one, like firstly, Star Trek was always like an optimistic series. Yeah. It was definitely. always like, it was never like the, the grim dark future. It was always yeah. like, you know, yeah, humanity had some bad spots and you can see some of the bad spots in mm -hmm. Star Trek, but we pulled through it and now things are like better. It's, it's, an, it's like, it's, it's a bright future yeah. overall. Um, and secondly, it was always about the characters and their relationships and they were, um, they were always mature. They never pulled punches. You know, the, the, the episode that comes to mind, now that I'm thinking about it, is that one episode where uh, Worf is asked to donate blood to a Romulan. Of and, TNG. And TNG. You should say. Yeah. <laughs> and he, and you know, Worf hates Romulans. Yeah. Because he's, he's being racist. With, yeah. He has a reason, but still. Well, yeah, he has a reason. I don't know. <laughs> like, if, if you know, a race, like a specific race kills your entire family, spoilers. You're, you're a racist, then, you know, me. Then you, get, you get to be a little bit racist. <laughs> just well, a little. But here's the thing. Um, <laughs> you know, a show, another show, especially another show nowadays, mm -hmm. would resolve the moral dilemma by having like a third option. Like just, just give you an easy way out. But TNG didn't. TNG said, listen, either you let Worf be racist and let this Romulan die, or you violate his rights and make him donate the, don donate the blood. Yeah. And... The show doesn't pull that punch. It nope. it allows Worf to be racist, yep. and the Romulan dies, and then there's actually a consequence to it. Yep. And it's like okay, so it's nice because you get it's it's more realistic than yes. having that magical third option. Because oftentimes in real life, you don't get the magical third option. You get two shitty options, and that's yep. all you get. Yes. And sometimes there's only one shitty option, but that's yes. the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But the that's that was what made TNG like all of Star Trek, but TNG especially special to me yeah is that it was and like the, there weren't like fucking marvel style quips 24 7 um it didn't mind being you know a bit grimy and edgy when it had to be but that wasn't yeah. that that wasn't like like humans were kind of past that that wasn't the theme yeah. of the sea of any any of the shows in the in the star trek universe yeah. even people who even, even the darkest show d space nine Still yeah. had that thread of optimism going through it yeah. because when when like when, when we encounter the the darker sections of Starfleet like section yep. thirty one yep. our heroes are are rightly disgusted by what they do yep. so there's it, it basically it just it provided like this sense of, of liberal optimism towards the future mm -hmm. and and about how humanity is going to turn out um, 
It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be a utopia. But basically the idea that it's not going to be a fucking cyberpunk, grim, dark <laughs> hellhole yep. where everything sucks. Yep. However, after 9-11, mm-hmm. that type of science fiction became way more popular. It was already popular in the 80s, yeah. but it became way more popular after oh, yeah. 9-11. And they tried to, like, make... They tried to like update Star Trek in that way, so like they did the they did the whole like in, in Enterprise did like the Zindi attacking Earth and yeah. that's that show that didn't help the show it still got canceled. Yeah. Um, they tried to do they tried to like make it just a straight action movie with the J.J. Abrams reboot, mm-hmm. and I think like those were okay movies, but they weren't really Star Trek movies. Yeah, after like I really enjoyed those movies before I knew anything about Star Trek because of course I saw those first mm-hmm. because I don't I didn't watch old things before you because yeah. you know because you're a, you're a fucking zoomer I know yeah, yeah <laughs> totally and um, but they were they were really good I really I really enjoyed watching them but then after watching Star Trek I'm just like oh. <laughs> yeah, that's not what they were supposed to be. Oh. The reason, okay, I know, we're, we're here to talk about Picard season three, episode one. The reason I'm doing all this is because, I'm, I'm describing all this because Naomi didn't know what Star Trek was really before she met me. And maybe some of you watching still don't know what Star Trek is, and that's okay. No, it's not. <laughs> I should watch it. But no, we sat down, I, I, over the course of like the first half of our relationship, we mm. sat down and watched every single Star Trek. Yeah, all everything. We, we started chronologically. Yes, we started with, with the original series. Which was surprisingly good. For the time. <laughs> But you have to remember that it was a 50s show? 60s show. 60s show. show. show I, think. I think it was a 60s show. I don't remember. Um, I think it was like 1969? So once you go into the mindset of this is a really old show and it's not going to be perfect, but it's still going to, you know, it's still going to be Star Trek, it's yes. great. Yeah. Then we watched the animated series. Yep. Which was just kind of goofy. <laughs> that, yeah, that was goofy, but also a product of its time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like watching Scooby-Doo again. Yep. <laughs> then we watched, um, we watched TNG. But here's the thing. We watched them in order of release. So back in the day, TNG, DS9, and Voyager all came out at the same time, like yep. overlapping. Yep. So we actually watched the episodes overlapping the way they came out. Yeah. Because and like I had never done that before. So that was a fun experience. Yeah, that was that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Going back and forth between like different casts and having to keep them all in our heads. Well, yeah, but also like being able to like get the story slightly better. Like being like instead of instead of like watching like there was the, crossovers between. Yeah, yeah, because there was there was qua- crossovers like in later seasons, and instead of being able to like watching an entire series and watching the next one, and being like, oh, who was that person? Why is this crossover relevant? Yeah. You actually you got it. Understand why it's relevant? Yeah, like I know I know Julian Bashir from DS9 was like a, was guest starring on TNG for one episode. Um, was he? Yep. He was like doing an experiment on data. Oh, yeah. I don't remember. It was like that. in season six or something. I don't remember this. I remember. Yeah. I remember when Will came to the to DS Nine for like a day. Will, Riker. Yo, oh, but it was it was actually Thomas Riker. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah it was the, the duplicate. Um, but then also. Um, spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. <laughs> the guy who made the EMH in Voyager came to DS Nine for a day too. It's been too long. I have to watch them all again, so yep, I fully we, we, remember we, all these references. Yeah, we haven't watched TS9 in like three or four years, huh? Yeah, it's been a so, while. Yeah, it's, Jesus. It's because we keep watching new bad Trek. So the idea was we were, we were going to go through the entire Star Trek canon in order of release. Mm-hmm. So we go through all the shows, you go through Enterprise, and then I'm like, okay, Naomi, here's... Oh, we also watch the movies as well. Yeah, we did watch the movies. Um, like, like all the various like TNG movies, original series movies. Yeah. And then we get to the reboots, we watch the reboots, and they're like, well, they're not very good. No. But they're okay. And I'm like, okay, Naomi, here's where it gets bad. Now we're going to start watching Discovery. And Naomi was like, ugh. <laughs> and here's the thing, okay? So, like, Discovery Season 1, like, there was a skeleton of a decent show, but they needed to do it completely differently, and they just didn't do it. Also, the Klingons at the yeah, beginning. That was bad. The Trump Klingons. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but, like, there was, if you just told me a, a, a bare-bone synopsis of Star Trek Discovery Season 1, I'd be like, that could be good. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't because they did everything wrong. Yeah, but also same with season two. Actually, season two was better than season one. In fact. Yeah, but Discovery is a good science fiction show. It's not a good Star Trek show. Not a good Star Trek show. Like yeah. it's better now in the later seasons where we're actually in the future and in the future, like attempting to re spoilers, attempting to rebuild civilization because it all fell no, apart. Well, not civilization, but rebuild the... Uh, well, I've forgotten all of my words. The Federation? Thank you. Jesus Christ. Fuck. Listen, it is early in the morning for Naomi. Holy Jesus. fuck. <laughs> Drink some more of that coffee over there. Why don't you? I'm going. I've already half done. It's not helping. <laughs> okay. Um, so Star Trek Discovery Season 1 was not very good. Star Trek Discovery Season 2 was better, but but I think I think it was just... Uh, looking back on it, I think it was just for the fan service, because you had, you had Captain Pike, you had Spock. Yeah. 
You know, just having and he had number one come back. Yeah. You know, I think I think and he had the Enterprise, the original Enterprise. Yeah. So I think I think it was all just fan service for season two. Mm-hmm. Um, season three was like. That's when we went to the future. Yeah, they went to the right, future. Yes. That's where it started getting better. Yeah. Yeah. And season three and season four are now like. Okay, Mediocre. So, yeah, season three and season four are about as good as like a a, a slightly bad episode of Voyager, which is still pretty bad, but it's better than it has been. No, I don't know. I think it was. I think they're on par with like a medi- mediocre episode of Voyager. You yeah. know, like not not a specifically bad episode, but like a mediocre episode. You know, yeah, okay. being like, yeah, I watched it and it was, you know, it was okay. Mm-hmm. You know. You know, we watched Lower Decks, which is just a comedy show, and it's funny for a comedy show. Yep. Yeah, Lower Decks is like actually pretty good, but it's like it's it's a comedy show. It's strictly comedy. Yeah. And, and you have to know all the Star Trek references. You're like, oh, Tom Parrish was up in this episode. Ha ha ha. Like you you have to have seen all of Star yeah. Trek to get it. But for what it is, it's good. Yeah. I really enjoy Lower Decks. Yeah. Um. Like if you haven't seen all of Star Trek, you're not you're not gonna really like it that much. No. And like it's like it's very specifically like yes, this is part of the Star Trek universe, but it's also like here's a shit ton of fan service and like just goof yep. about the Star Trek universe. Yeah, but it's good. I, I enjoyed it. Um, and of course, we mentioned the Orville briefly because the Orville is literally just TNG again, and I can kind of enjoy that. Yeah, I mean. I will say, I do... Okay, guys, I really, really like the Orville, and this is probably going to be shown as a bad take, at least according to things I've seen online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I, in the latest season of the Orville, I miss the comedy that was in season one. Yeah, season three, like, I think Seth MacFarlane was like, I can do a real show now, and it's like, no, it's supposed to be a... Co- it's, it's a parody. You gotta chill the fuck out. It's, it's a parody. But he wanted to try and make it, like, a real show. But the thing is, like, it's... I, I still like it, but, like, I actually really miss, like, all the comedy in season one, because now it just feels like a generic, like, Star Trek adjacent, you know? Yeah. Like, it's, I, I'm not saying it's a bad show. I just... I felt like it was more unique. When it was when a it was When it was more... Not, like... Yeah, it was a parody, but, like, it, like... It didn't specifically mention like Star Trek things, but it was un- it was a unique like this is obviously a Star Trek reference show. They can't see you. you I you don't care. Hands. This is for me. <laughs> they only is dressing with their hands right now. <laughs> it's for me to help me focus. God damn it. Okay, it was, tell me it about it. It didn't specifically comment that it was a Star Trek show. Mm-hmm. You know, it just like if you've seen Star Trek and you watch the show. You're just like, oh yeah, this is kind of like Star Trek, but with a lot more comedy. And I, I felt that like was, it was very unique. Yes. For but now in the latest season, I'm just like, this is mildly boring, and I'm not laughing as nearly as much as I did. Yeah. You know, but it's still a good show. I just miss what it was. Yeah. But I understand wanting to move on from that. I just wish nah, they, didn't. They, they, they yeah they shouldn't have. In my opinion, I they shouldn't. I just wish they didn't. That's just. Um, my personal opinion, I'm sure a lot of the commenters aren't going to like that, but that's okay. No, I'm pretty sure that I should agree with you if you have a brain. Um, <laughs> so listen, listen. To, to quickly go through this then, because we're getting bogged down. Um, we watched Star Trek Prodigy, which is the kid's show. It's it's good for a kid's show. It's the, the, it's written for children. If yeah, you like Star show. Trek and you don't like shows written for children, don't watch it. Yeah, but you know what? It's basically set up so that if you're a parent and you're a longtime Trek fan, and you mm-hmm. want to get your kids into Star Trek, what you could do is you could sit down, watch this with your kids. Mm-hmm. They're going to enjoy it as a kid's show, and yeah. you're going to enjoy all the all the lore references yeah. because Janeway comes back, Chakotay comes back. They have, like... like comes the, back. The, 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 Zindi sh- the Zindi show up for a little bit. You know, uh, the, t- the Tellarites show up for a little bit. Yeah. The, there's, um, there's a bunch of lore that's built into the show. And that, there's a lot more aliens, yeah. so that's neat. Yeah. Yeah. Um... We watched Strange New Worlds. That was the uh, the Christopher Pike yes, Spock show. It's so good. It's okay. Well, here is there still some serious problems with it. Okay, I don't but, care. You know what? I, after watching Picard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is such a good show. <laughs> Strange New Worlds is it is actually kind of a delight, just because it is Trek again. Mm-hmm. Now it still has the Marvel quips that I I'm kind of getting tired of at this point and mm-hmm. being in fucking everything. Yep. Um. But. Mm-hmm. They had self-contained one-episode stories. Yeah. You know, they had, like, their villains of the week. Yep. They had their going around, going to different planets, having adventures. Yep. They structured it like an actual Star Trek show. hmm And you have characters that we know, like Christopher Pike and yeah. Spock. Who's so and, hot. And number one. Not Spock. Christopher Pike. Really? The actor is way too hot. <laughs> Listen, you were also into Spock when we first met, remember? Yeah. <laughs> you just like all of them. You fucking... Yeah. You horno. Yeah. <laughs> do you, like all the, you like all the girls too, I bet. Yeah. Do you, do you like do you like Ortega, the girl with like the the short hair on the sides? Probably. 
Yeah, honestly. I don't remember anyone's name is anymore for any, from anything. I know, I know that, that you like the fucking blue GF girl from Lower Decks. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you just want a blue girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> blue is my favorite color. How can I not want a girl who's blue? Mm -hmm. I'll take the man who's blue, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the one that was blind? Well, no. I mean, just a blue Oh, you're man. ableist. Oh, my God, Naomi. <laughs> Ableist and racist, because he was an Anar, so all of his race is blind. It's part of his race. I can't fucking believe you, Naomi. How terrible of a person are you? But he, wasn't he Andorian? He was just a sub-race of the Andorians? Yeah, the, uh, the, the Anar are all blind. That's not being racist! Listen, if a quality of your race is that you can't see, and then you're like, I don't like people who can't see, you're being racist towards them. I didn't say I don't like people who can't see. I just said I didn't Naomi's. want to date someone who can't see. Oh, wow. Listen... If you Fine, you know what? If you go blind, I'm dumping you. In 2023, <laughs> if you wouldn't date a trans woman, you're a transphobic. So therefore, if you wouldn't date, date a blind person, you're blindphobic. That's how it works. Fine. If okay. you wouldn't, if you wouldn't date a Muslim, you're Islamophobic too. Okay. <laughs> you're just like Fine. Giga Chad. Yes. Fine. <laughs> I'll take it. Okay. Fine. But anyway, uh, uh, Stranger Worlds, good show, as close to. As, as close to old Star Trek as we've gone. Yeah. And With enjoyable. After Discovery. Yeah, so basically in Discovery Season 2, the main cast goes off to the future. The side cast stays behind, and then Season uh, season 1 of Strange New Worlds continues with their the side cast story. Yes. With Pike and Spock. And, yes. Because they are the side cast of Discovery Season 2. Yes. So basically, all the new Star Trek shows have never really like hit the heights of good TNG or good DS9. Mm -hmm. They've never gotten there. No. But Strange New Worlds is the closest. It's the closest. And and Strange New Worlds is like as good as, in my opinion, like an average episode of TNG. Yeah, which is really good. Which is still pretty good. <laughs> it's still pretty good. You know, Discovery is like D Discovery is now like a mediocre episode of Voyager, which is yeah. not as good. It's it's watchable, but it's not as good. Mm -hmm. um, and then then you ha then the, the other shows are all like gimmicks because the kids yeah. show, the cartoon show, yeah. you know, um, then you have Picard. And then you have Picard. And we finally got there, like, 20 minutes or whatever later. Well, okay. you know what? The Star Trek universe is a large, it's large. And glorious place. Da, 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 da. Okay. Da, da. <laughs> so, they set up in Discovery Season 3 this a storyline where um, Empress Georgiou goes back in time. Do you recall? Yes. And she leaves the show. And that's supposed to be the setup for a Section 31 show. Because yep. she's going to be the star of it. Yep. Um, so far, that hasn't happened yet. We're waiting and, for Section 31. And the show reason to come that it hasn't happened is because Paramount only, they set aside a budget for five shows at once. Mm -hmm. They're only making five Star Trek shows at once. And the uh, Christopher Pike and Spock, like, first of all, all the shows have fucking failed and sucked. But fans loved. Pike and Spock so much in Discovery Season 2, they were like, everyone on, on the internet was like, give these guys their own show. Make their sh make a show. Make a show with them. Make a show. And they're like, oh my god, everything about our show suck. No one likes anything. We have to do something. And they're like, and then I'm sure someone at Paramount was like, okay, fucking make, make is this is the only thing anyone likes. Make this show. So they're like, okay, uh, if we're making Strange New Worlds, we, we gotta preempt a show. What are we doing? Uh, we can't, like, preempt Discovery. It's the, it's the, it's the flagship. Yeah. We can't preempt Picard, because we just spent, like, a billion dollars getting Patrick Stewart back. So uh, <laughs> I, I guess we'll just, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just cancel the third, Section 31 one. Yep. So basically, what they did was, until Picard is done, because they only have Patrick Stewart for three seasons. Yep. Um, no they, other new shows are coming out. They shelved <laughs> Section 31. Yep. That show's not happening until Picard's done. Yep. And then, then it will take the Picard slot. So instead of what what might be an okay show in section, we don't 31, know. We don't I mean, know. We don't know. Giorgio is she's kind a of fucking baller. Yeah, she's she's pretty fun. <laughs> she's a badass bitch, and I love her. But like the other characters that in, from section twenty one that they introduced back in the Discovery era were not very interesting. Picard is like the albatross hanging around the entire Star Trek franchise because Picard's season of one and two, they're not just bad Star Trek. They're bad TV. They are, I think, the worst TV I've ever seen. Mm. No, I can't think of anything worse. Like they're, they're, I, I feel like there's probably shows we haven't watched that are worse. Because you've never seen Heroes, right? Uh, I saw some of it, like season one or two. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like afterwards, it's it got shit. really bad. But yeah. I don't know because I haven't seen it. But that's okay. what the internet says, so okay. I have to believe them. All right, fair enough. <laughs> um, the worst episode of, you know, pre Alex Kurtzman Trek 
was probably Voyager's Threshold, where they go faster than Warp 10 and then, like, turn into salamanders. Yeah, that was a weird episode. That was, like, abysmally bad. Yeah, that was... That was very bad. That was a weird episode. And Picard is, like, it's not just slightly... It's, it's not on par. It's worse it's, than that episode. It's not just slightly worse. It is significantly worse. I hate like, it. Picard... Okay, Picard goes from, like... Like, you can't even laugh at how bad it is. No. It's, we tried. It didn't work. Naomi, you watched it and you legitimately got went into a depression. Yeah. Like, I... Wait, it was the last episode of season two or one? I don't remember. Uh, what happened in it? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Half of this one day is, I, like, just going you know out what? of my brain once, as I'm saying it. <laughs> once season three of Picard is done and Patrick Stewart is safely in the fucking grave... Mm -hmm. I'm going to, like, because I'm sure he'll die immediately after this. Is there anything keeping him alive? Is it the Star Trek books? But, like, as soon as... <laughs> yeah, Naomi. As soon as the show is done, I'm going to do, like, a big review like I did with Obi-Wan Kenobi mm -hmm. for Picard. Because, like, of, of everything. Because it's so bad. It's so, so bad. Okay. I don't remember, but I did. I, like, legitimately just felt fucking depressed at how terrible this show was. And I just, like, laid in bed for the rest of the day being like, nope, I'm done with humanity. Yep. <laughs> you were, like, it actually, like, shut you down for yep, a day. Yep, because Jesus. Yep. So bad. Like, Picard season one, they ruined Picard himself. Yeah. They ruined Data. They ruined the Borg. They ruined the Romulans. They, ruin they ruined... Them. Yes, they did. They didn't ruin the Borg till season two. Nope. They had the, they had the artifact... That, that reclaimed Borg cube in the middle of Romulan space that we're working on. Yeah. They ruined the Borg. They ruined the Romulans. They ruined Seven of Nine. They introduced a bunch of new characters only to ruin them. <laughs> so, Gerardi was terrible. Uh, Rios was terrible. Um, he, he, he was more ruined in season two than season one, but yeah. he still wasn't interesting. No. Um, oh, actually, I, I read online. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the ship... Sorry, if for season three, the ship that... Um, Drug, drug girl, whatever. Remy? Fucking, Ram, Rammy? Raffi. 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 I don't know why I keep calling her Remy. I don't know either. <laughs> Is there a, do you know her, like a Remy? Remy sounds like a familiar name. I don't know a Remy, but there's definitely been a Remy in some sort of media I've been consuming recently. Mm. Oh, it's House. It's House, that's right. It's yeah, House. Yeah. Yep. Did you notice that Raffi was in Rios's, Rios's ship. old ship? Yeah, I yeah. noticed that. Guess what? That's not supposed to be Rios's ship. What? They're, what is they're, this ship? They're, no, no, no. They're reusing the same set. But it's a different ship. But you have to make it look different. It looks the same. It's not Rios' ship. Moving on. Moving on. How angry about that? I'm annoyed. Okay. They fuck like Elnor was a big fucking waste. Oh. The Romulan God. the okay, Romulan okay, ninja. Go. Okay, I wanna point out that you're talking about season one, and like most of these characters got more ruined in season two. Because season two was worse than season one. It was, yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just going okay, so here, here, fine, fine, fine. Fine. I'll rewind it then. Fuck. Alright? <laughs> Here's everything that, that Star Trek Picard ruined in seasons one and two, okay? Picard and his relationships to the entire old cast by replacing with a new cast that all suck. All the new characters that were added were introduced, they were terrible, and then they were ruined over the course. Of, like, they were made even worse. So Gerardi was terrible, Raffi was terrible, fucking Rios was terrible, um, Elnor was terrible. They ruined Seven of Nine. Mm -hmm. They ruined Seven of Nine's relationship with Janeway by basically, like, like she just... She does so many things that are, like, completely against her character arc in Voyager. It's, like, remember when she goes and, like, gets revenge for Icheb's fucking murder? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, Edith has, has, like, a gruesome murder for no fucking reason, other than because the, um, the actor that, that played Icheb back in the 90s spoke out against, there was some drama that he spoke out against, mm -hmm. and the, and, and the, and the Star Trek company, like, turned on him for it. Mm-hmm. Because it was against another actor, and the like, it was it was I don't know the full details. If I ever make a, if I ever make a, a big video, I'll get the details. But like I do, I do recall it was fucking stupid. Yeah. All right, and they just pettily like had his character ripped apart for no fucking reason. They they ruined the Borg. They ruined the Borg Queen specifically. Yeah. By making yeah fucking that was that was really bad. Yeah, they made they made Gerardi. Fuck. So like, back in time, in the second season. In the second season, they're in 2024. Gerardi becomes the Borg Queen. Yep. She then survives all the way through TNG and Voyager. And it's yep. like, hold on. So Gerardi was in charge of... Yeah. So... The, the whole... Wh why? Wh why did you... Okay, if Gerardi was on our side the whole well, no, time, no, no, why no. did she do all that shit? Did, I think... It was so bad. No, no, no. They time traveled back. Remember? No, no, no. No, I think the Borg did. Nope, yeah, they did nope, too. No, they didn't. You sure? Nope. What happened was Gerardi uh, took Rios's ship, which by the way, <laughs> Rios's ship is now gone. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> but they took Rios. She took Rios's ship, and then she flew off to the Borg Collective to become its queen. Yeah, make the Borg good. And so make the Borg good. And basically, over the next however many years it has been, yeah, she gets to the Collective. She takes over. She becomes the queen. the The issue is that <laughs> in the actual timeline, the Borg attacked Earth several times. Yep. Uh, the Borg attacked Voyager several times. The Borg yeah. assimilated Seven and Nine's family. Like yeah. the Borg did all this terrible shit, and Gerardi was apparently at the head of it the whole time. Why? I th- None of it makes sense. None of it makes sense. I swear. Oh yeah, they ruined Q. Oh god, yeah, that they, was. They fucking ruined Q. That was unfortunate. They brought back Will Wheaton for one like. And honestly, okay, that was stupid. When when Will Wheaton came back in season two, he he looked like Will Wheaton, not like Wesley yeah, Crusher. He did. He just looked. I was just like, hey, that's Will Wheaton, and I was like, wait, who did he play again? Oh, it's oh shit, that's right, it's Wesley. But he's not actually Wesley. He's just Will fucking Will. He's Wheaton. just Will Wheaton, and I was just those like he should have shaved. At least that, yeah. He should have like like not because the character can't grow up, but because we haven't seen the character since he was a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> so he should have shaved to make himself yeah. look younger. So, and they, they fuck, oh yeah, they ruined like the Khan shit. Project Khan, remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think with the exception of the Dominion War, Picard season one and two touched on every single popular, beloved component of Star Trek lore and then raped it. Jesus. All of it, all of it, and now it's all ruined. Like if we take st- and and also it wasn't there wasn't even any like it wasn't um it doesn't it wasn't like well acted it wasn't well well written the characters weren't interesting no nope. like it was and, and there's so many plot holes where, where did where did that 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 Romulan guy go which one the villain at the end of season one I don't he, even remember who the he, villain was he was just like he, he was locked up and he's like I'm here to he's like, you're here to I'm, we're gonna save the world and then he just disappears from yep. the show he just, just never see him again yep. Right, like, okay. There's there's apparently um, an, another dimension full of synthetic life forms that can be called through a portal to destroy all um, all bio everything. All, everything. all bio yep. all biological life. Mass Effect style, by the way. Season one's dilemma, which came was taken was straight from Mass Effect. It's the, it's the yeah. fucking Reapers. I want I, I want to point out that as we were watching it for the first time, Dev was just screaming, "It's the fucking Reapers!" <laughs> like throughout the entire episode, <laughs> well, it was obvious. I I know, but you were just yelling it at the TV mm-hmm. throughout like the whole episode. <laughs> yep. And that's just oh, they closed the portal. That is unresolved. Okay. Yep. Um, in season two, the entire setup for season two, the, oh. the, the, the going back in time, season two worse, becomes by the way. Jordy becomes the Borg queen. There's all this like commentary about Trump and capitalism and fucking and like homelessness Envi- in L.A. and environmentalism. environmentalism. Oh my god, they they, they dropped everything in season two. Yeah. And then. They get back to the to, to the, the present, and it turns out the whole the whole endeavor was to reveal that Gerardi was actually the queen of the Borg, yeah. and 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 the Borg were there to help stop a random anomaly that was coming out of a portal. Yeah, it was a big energy beam. Yeah, and they force it back in the portal and they close it, and then with it's, several ships, and then it's done. Yeah, like, it's like, that was it was never explained. They, and, and fucking <laughs> Elnor dies, and then he's like, they they, they hail the other ship, and they're just like Elnor's like. I just woke up here on the other ship, dude. It's like, listen, you weren't even there before. Yep. You were, you were a cadet. Like, yep. there, oh, I, uh, <laughs> listen, I'm gonna have to do like a huge video on just how bad you, you know, seasons one and two were. You're, you're actually gonna have to separate it into like at least three videos. They were the worst TV I've seen. Yeah, that was pretty like, bad. On a technical level, on a writing level, on an acting level, on a lore level, like everything was bad. Yeah. There was like, okay, here, you know what? They tug at the heartstrings in two scenes. One, when Data dies. Two, when Q, di- when Q dies. When Q, when, when Q says goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. That That's was... it. And you know what? The entire seasons were set up. Yeah. So you have, to, you have to wade through just tons of bullshit. And they're like, you'll forget about it because you felt something when you saw a character that you remember from your childhood die. And it's like, I see what you're doing, but I'm not that fucking stupid. <laughs> All right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. So the thing is, what I'm getting at, Half hour in, I haven't gotten to the actual show we're talking about. Yeah, well, what, no, what, we got to the actual show, just not the yeah, season. Yeah. What, what I'm getting at is that Picard <laughs> season one and two were the worst TV I've ever seen in my life. Worst Trek, worst TV. They're both super bad. Worst, and season two was worse than any movie that I've seen. Well, what about some of the bad movies? No, you know what? Like, really? I'll, I'll sit down and watch Schizophrenia and laugh at it. Okay, Schizophrenia. I can't laugh at. No, but, but no. Like, okay, I, I'm gonna. I'll get a few laughs at a Driller Killer. Shout out to Red Letter Media here with their best of the worst series. Yeah. 
I'm sure that a few movies on there, they made it look good because we they didn't we didn't have to watch the full thing. They did. I've watched, watched some of those movies, though. I've watched some of those movies, and I enjoyed yeah, watching the better them. better ones. <laughs> I enjoyed watching them more. Okay. I enjoyed uh, watching them more than fucking Picard. Okay, Dev. Well, because here's the thing. Like, a bad movie, is kind of, sometimes it's funny bad. Yeah. Sometimes a really bad movie is just boring. Okay? Yeah. It's very rare that a show becomes, like, personally offensive. <laughs> and that is what Picard is. Yeah. It's worse than ba- it's worse than funny bad. Because you, you, you have a good time. Yeah. It's worse than boring because you're just bored. But now it's like, oh, here's a thing that you love and we're going to ruin it actively. Mm-hmm. That makes it, like, so much worse. Yeah. Yeah. It's All right. pretty bad. It's it's really bad. Yeah. So we get to we get to season three of Picard, and Naomi's like, I don't want to watch it. No. I don't want to. Nope. <laughs> Fuck you. We well, watched I, it. Um. Uh, no, you watched it first, and then you were just like, listen, it's not as bad as season two. Or season one. Or se- season two is worse though, than season one. Yeah. That's that's my that's my baseline. So it's Fuck. not as bad as I mean, season your low two. Line? Yeah. So it's on a base. So. Um, whatever. <laughs> For now, it's the base because I didn't realize that you can get lower than bedrock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that was like, listen, it's it's not as bad and I think that you're not going to like hate yourself for watching this and I was like fine yeah and so we watched it we watched together it. and and here's the thing all right season 3 episode 1 of Picard it is about as bad as a bad episode of Voyager which is now on par with Discovery and the thing is <laughs> it was so strange like, it's it's still really bad but it's not like apocalyptically bad the way that Picard was. I yeah no I can't guys my skew my like is a media bad now is very skewed by Picard. Yeah. So like anything that's better <laughs> than Picard I'm just like it's great. And, and here's the thing like <laughs> the, the fucking Rotten Tomato scores for Picard season three are through the roof and I'm yeah. like listen listen it's not a ninety it's not a hundred this is like a show that is like maybe a forty five but that's far better than the zero. That Picard was <laughs> all right. So Picard it's season one or two. Like watching, watching Picard, season three, episode one, is kind of like watching Voyager Threshold, mm. in that it's really bad and really fucking stupid. But it could be so much worse. <laughs> it could be so much worse. And you know what? Can I can I say my piece now? You sure go ahead. Is that Will fucking Riker is like keeping that show together? <laughs> He is, yeah. Will Raker is keep Will Raker with Picard mm-hmm. that we haven't seen in so many years is yep. is is what's what kept the episode going for me because I was just yep. enjoying that. Yeah, that's all I was enjoying. I was just like, <laughs> that was great. I miss Will Raker. Have, having them back together again. <laughs> yeah, like he like well, we, we get some Raker in uh in um, Lower Decks. He's kind of fun in that too. Yeah, mm-hmm. Will Raker is always fun everywhere he is. That's why <laughs> I like his character so much. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he's, he's like old man grumpy Raker now. He's like, oh my knees hurt. Fuck, I gotta pee so much. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, he's still his character. Yeah. Unlike Patrick Stewart. <laughs> yeah. So, Will, Re- like, the guy who plays Will Riker, um, fuck, what was his name? I entirely forget. Oh I'm so God. sorry to the actor, but you were just Will Riker to me now. <laughs> I'm not going to remember it. Fuck. No, you're not. But you, he, can, you should but, edit it in. Yeah, later. yeah, I will. <laughs> the, the, uh, the character is still Will Riker. Yeah. However, He's just old Will Riker, yeah. and it's nice. But, but the, the issue is, and this is something that we saw in Picard season one and two, is that the character of Picard is no longer Captain Picard. Now it's just Patrick Stewart. Yeah, that's what it feels like, which is so... It's so strange, too, because, like... I loved Patrick Stewart before Picard. Like, he was one of my favorite actors. Like, I... I, I Unlike most people, because I watched them really young, I fucking loved the X-Men movies, the old X-Men movies, because I I watched them as a kid, guys. I watched them as a kid, I was biased, but I fucking loved Patrick Stewart. And you know what? I also really liked Patrick Stewart in American Dead. His character was of, mm-hmm. of uh, Commander Bullock so fucking mm-hmm. funny. He was great. Yep. And now after watching Picard, well, also you, you, you saw him in TNG. You thought it was good in TNG. Yeah, as well, also TNG. Like, of course. <laughs> yes. Captain well, Picard. what's funny is like all throughout the nineties, everyone was saying if you're gonna do an X Men movie, you have to get Patrick Stewart. Yeah, man. Before play, they did it. Yeah. Yeah, to play Xavier because like he's the perfect mm-hmm. character and he was. It was great. It was the perfect casting. And I'm just I'm so upset. That I kind of hate him now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't actually hate Patrick Stewart. I'm just. I'm just. 
Well, it's clear that like upset the, about the, the show. The Picard character is yeah. because of meddling by Patrick Stewart. Well, now. he's an executive producer. Yeah. Now. And I think which... I think the reason they could even do the show is because they brought him in. and He's like, I want to do everything <laughs> my way. And they're like, okay. And they're just like, okay. Okay, Mr. Star. Yep. Yep. Also, I'm fucking ninety. <laughs> yeah, like you, like you can tell that Patrick Stewart is like feeling his age now with yep. the way he like moves on set and stuff. Yep. Will Riker, he's t- he's pretty old too, but he's like, I'm still good. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Going on an adventure. <laughs> um, but okay, so here, okay, I'm gonna give you the 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 quick overview of the plot of season three, episode one. Okay. Yeah. So it starts out. Beverly Crusher. Yeah. She's been away from. She's cut off everyone for twenty years. Twenty years. She doesn't talk to anyone. She's been off in her own ship doing something. We don't know what. We don't know what yet. But she's being attacked. There's some weird aliens and masks. They come in with their uh, guns. Weird aliens that we can't understand through the universe translator. Yeah, which yeah. I don't know if it was a writing plot hole or if it's uh, significant. You know what it is? It's the fact that they're making an action show. That too. They're making like a dumb action hour show. Yeah. So. They come in, there's a firefight, and of course, you know, Beverly gets hit, she goes, uh, I'm bleeding, she, like, shoots them. There's, it's, she it, incinerates one! It's it's a very normal, like, sci-fi action sequence. There's yeah. nothing really special about it. And then afterwards, she sends, like, a really overly dramatic coded message to Picard yeah. on a 20-year-old translator. or um, On his badge! On his old badge, which is clearly just, like, fan service. Yeah. But it makes sense in that she, want, she doesn't want it to be picked up by Starfleet. She's yeah. like, don't tell Starfleet, I'm doing something secret out here. Um, and I'm not gonna tell you either, fuck you. Yep. Yeah. And so the message gets to Picard and Picard is back at the Chateau Picard. And he's like, you know what? Despite my entire character, even my entire, my entire characterization in seasons one and two and Picard, I'm going to sell everything and get rid of all my shit. Yeah. Including all of those artifacts I've collected. Before he gets the message, by the way. Yeah. Before he gets he the even, message. Like, he even, he, he's even like, man, this, this flute that I got from the inner light, I just want to get rid of this thing. Oh God. <laughs> and, his new girlfriend is like this this Romulan housekeeper of his who was in season Who's, one and two. No, she's she, she wasn't a spy, but she was she, she was she was a spy for the Romulans. But yeah, but wasn't she a shell uh Shal Tiar? Tal, Tal Shiar. Tal Shiar, fuck. You're a racist. I'm not racist. I forgot all the words to everything in the English okay. language. In the she was an language. old Tal Shiar, but but then after the Romans collapsed, she like ended up being a refugee and then she was yeah. she was just living at Picard's place. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, the, basically, at the end of season two, they got into a relationship. Yeah. And so... It was also bad. Picard and Laris was her name. Yeah. They're in this relationship, and she's moving off to be some kind of diplomat on another planet, and Picard's like, I'll go with you. Is she? I didn't even... Yep. I didn't that's, notice that's, that's, that. That's why they're moving. Oh, and okay. And Picard is like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it. I'll go with you. I, I want to abandon everything in my old life and get rid of all my old stuff. Yeah. Get, give my old painting of, of the Enterprise to Geordi. I don't give a shit. I'm done with this stuff. I want to go have a new adventure. It's like, with you, my new life partner for the few years I have left. Yep. He didn't say that. Even though, even though he's a robot, implied. by the way, he's a robot. Oh, fuck, that's you right. Forgot you, you, like, they, they should have just killed him at the end of season one. Uh, and then put him put like, put like him into like a new robot body or something. But no, he's a robot. You forgot about that, eh? <laughs> Maybe you forgot that they, they, they never mentioned it again. They never mentioned it again. But all throughout season two and season three, Picard's a robot now. Okay. <laughs> so they're going off to have this 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 new adventure, and then he gets the message, and he's like, "Oh!" And then she looks at it, and she's like, "Okay, this looks legit. You gotta go." And he goes off. He he decides to go to Ten Forward, which, by the way, now after the season two's events, that was retcon too. Guinan is uh, she aged because she wanted to? Yeah, that was weird. That yeah. was a, such yeah. a weird explanation of that. They just wanted to explain Whoopi Goldberg being like fat. As in her old age, it's he all just it aged. Exactly, but here's the no. Well, here's the issue though. The issue. Oh yeah, that's right. They said that she was ageless. Yeah, that was not, not that she not that she was ageless, but that we saw her back in the 1800s and she looked the exact same as she did in the yeah on, on the Enterprise. Yeah, but all it, that was also weird too because fucking they show like Guinan in in 2024 as being really bitter and it's like that wasn't Guinan. Yeah, she, she, and also. If they went back in time in TNG for Time's Arrow and had this this big adventure, why didn't Guinan mention the second adventure that they had together? Oh, it's so every oh, hey, <laughs> it's all no, 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 okay. focus on season one, season so, three. Focus. <laughs> she, they they all go to Ten Forward, which is now a bar in L.A. Nope, you San said Fr- it was L.A. It was San Francisco. Oh, okay, well I don't fucking know. Where it's it now is. a bar in San Francisco. Um, <laughs> it was just named after Deck Ten Forward 
on yes, the ship. Yes, no. Fuck. Yeah. But now it's like a, like apparently it's like, a, it's like a street address. Whatever. Okay. They go into the new 10-4, which is actually the old pre-Enterprise 10-4 that existed back in 20 fucking 24 in San Francisco. And Picard meets Will Riker there. Yeah. And they look over... And there's always, like, to try and smooth over how shit the show is, they always throw, throw in a few, like, lore references. So they're like, yeah. oh, hey, Picard, you wouldn't remember this because you were you were still recovering from being uh, being fucked up as Locutus. Yeah. But there was a, there was a storyline where, like, there was a compu- computer virus on the show. I'm pretty sure this actually happened. There was, yeah. there was a computer virus on the Enterprise, and it, it added um, three to every single digit yeah. in the computer. Yeah. Because Picard couldn't figure out how to get the uh, coordinates that Beverly had encoded into this transmission on his very old communicator because he didn't know because of age old history lore reference. Yep. So (laughs) Beverly says the name of the virus and Will's like, I know what that is. You Mm -hmm. don't, but I do. Yeah. And then uh, adds three to every coordinate. And it turns out it leads to a system outside of Federation space. And like, we got to go. We got to go see what's going on out there. Yeah. Um, so here comes the more stupidity. So Th- this is the stupid part. So their plan. This is the stupid part. Their plan is to go back to Will Riker's old ship that he hasn't been captain of in five years now. Of the Titan. The Titan. He goes back to the Titan. He, he they, they pretend to be um, doing an inspection for of, Frontier Day. Frontier Day. This was also a lore reference. No. Pretty sure. Oh, you know what it was? It was 250 years after uh, the start of Enterprise where Jonathan Archer launched the NX-01. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. They didn't yeah. say it in the show, but that's what it is. I looked it up. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're celebrating Frontier Day. There's going to be a parade. They're, they're going to go inspect the ship. Um, a space parade. Yep. <laughs> they get there. Seven of Nine is the second office, is first officer. Yeah, which was very surprising. Like, yep. how did she... She just joined Starfleet. Well, apparently it's been... A while since season two. It's How been long? several. It's been several years. Yeah, still only several. They didn't. Years, they didn't like... say that, but yeah, because I think see, I think a seven of nine was like. I mean, this is this is part of the lore rip, by the way, because in season one, seven of nine was part of the Fenris Rangers, which is some yeah. organization they never fucking explain. It, it's she was literally just like a lone ranger. Yeah, like that. that and that's, then in that's season two, was. she had joined Starfleet, and she was like a lieutenant or something, and now she's a commander. Oh, did she? Yeah. Was she in Starfleet in season two? Yep. Okay, I actually just forgot. But that. also, this slate like, makes slightly kay, more sense then. Okay, in one year, between season one and season two, <laughs> all right, they have fucking, all right, Elnor goes from ninja to gra- what was that? Oh, it was you, Jesus Christ. Sorry. Elnor goes goes from um, Elnor goes from ninja. To graduating a four-year academy in one one and a half years or something, yep. ridiculous. He's amazing. He's, a, you know, he, he's Legolas. <laughs> you know, Kirk made a bet that he could do it in three. Yeah, yeah. And like that was considered a feat. Yeah. And then Elnor does it in one point five. Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. Um, <sighs> Rios, who hates Starfleet, is now a captain in Starfleet. Rejoins Starfleet. Rejoins. Which was... Um, Rafi, who was a drug addict, who was out on the outs, rejoined Starfleet. And yeah, but to get she back was in. already part of Starfleet, and then she just... Well, so Rios was too. No, no, left. I know, but like, like Rafi, like, Rios did, stopped because he hated because he was already a captain, right? I yeah. forget, I, fo- I kind of forget Rios' storyline. No, from no, what I, I remember... I think he was a commander. For, I don't care. For when I re- for one, I remember he commanded a starship, they got in a battle, he lost people, and then he was like, fuck this, I'm out. And uh, then Rafi was just having personal issues, and she turned to drugs. Um, Family se- Seven of Nine joins up. I, I mean, maybe like all the stuff she did under Janeway got her some extra credit or something, but I don't fucking know. She, she's now a lieutenant. Um, well, she was also like, really, she's still really oh, yeah. smart. Like, you, you don't see it in the show at all yeah. in Picard, but like J- uh, Janeway. Uh, Seven of Nine is like really, really smart because of yeah. all the Borg stuff, right? Yeah. So. Um, and. And. Gerardi, despite being convicted for murder in season one. They hand that away in season two. They hand, they, hand, they hand wave it away in season two by saying, oh, I'm out on parole because they need me for this job. Uh, I, I'm, I'm helping out. Yep. So stupid. Yeah. So, but anyway, like so all that shit changes in one year between season one and season two. Yeah. Now, between season two and season three, it's apparently several years. Okay. But I don't know how long it is exactly. Okay. But basically, uh, Seven of Nine's been promoted. She's now a commander. She's first mate of... The Titan. Of the Titan. 
Um, the show really wants to play up the captain of the Titan oh, as an asshole. Oh, man, yeah. But he's actually like, correct. They they really, like, I felt it. Like, I was just like, oh, I hate this guy because I, I, because, like, my brain was going, TNG rules, TNG. <laughs> like, it just kept going. So, basically. But they really want you to hate the captain. Yeah. Like, really, uh, really Picard and, Picard and Riker show up. And they're like, we gotta like sweet talk our way into like getting out to this this what is it called the Rylax system or something? I, my brain is like it was the Rio system. I think the it was, Rios. I think it was Rylas, Rylos. Something. It doesn't matter. It's it's a it's a far away system outside of Federation space. Starts with an R. We got we got it. We got to get we got to sweet talk this guy into doing it. And the guy's like, you think I'm a fucking idiot? No. <laughs> like I I read I know who you guys are. You guys play loosey goosey with the rules. Mm-hmm. You're gonna fucking try to get my ship. You're, you're, you're gonna get me fucked up. You're gonna get my crew fucked up. All right. Well, you're gonna you're, the ship's gonna get blown up or the fucking like like no. I'm 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 gonna follow the rules. Fuck you. Yeah. Like, but like. And he's correct. Yeah. He's actually correct. But said in a much more ashholeist way. Like all the passive aggressiveness. Ashholeist. Oh, ash. Ash. Yeah. Ash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go on. Anyway, but like said it in like the most passive aggressive way without actually being blunt like Dev just was and saying all that, you know? Well, he, yeah, he was definitely being a dick towards them. Because yeah, he, like, like, he, he knew something was up though. He's, yeah. not, he's not an idiot. No. And, and but also Seven of Nine hated his guts. Like yeah, that, was, personally. that was the one thing I was just like, man, and also I think that if you guys if you guys end up watching, I hope you guys don't watch season one. <laughs> season season three, episode one. But if you do, I actually think that the main reason that she hates Region? Re- I can't fucking talk. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Are you doing your coffee? Yes. Yeah, me too. I think the ah. main reason that, that she hates like the captain so much is that she shouldn't actually be a first officer. She should just be the uh, lieutenant or something or science officer. No, like the like head science officer. Yeah. Because that's what she was doing on uh, Voyager. Pretty much, she was and an she, officer, but yeah. Yeah, but like she, she was pretty much the head science officer. Like, come on. And but like she was great and was really good at that. But now she's first officer and just hates her fucking job because she has to work immediately under a captain. She doesn't really like. I'm just like, okay, so go do science stuff because that's what made you happy. Yeah. You know. I don't know. Like it feels like nah. It's it's just the whole thing of her character being very different, but there being no lead up to her being very different. Yep, so it's, yep, yep, so yep. if you think about Voyager, it's like well that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing, to, to actually get along with with the story though. Uh, so the sweet talking s- doesn't work. Sweet talking doesn't work. Seven nine's like fuck it, and then they go there anyway, yep. and then. The captain is like, you know what? You just fucked yourself out of your career. And someone's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, Picard and Riker steal a shuttle. They fly out. They find Beverly's ship. Yep. They dock. Um, Beverly's like, by the way, I have another son. No, okay. Beverly was unconscious in the ship. And <laughs> she was in a medical thing. And this guy just randomly attacks Will and yeah. Picard. And it and, turns out that it's, it's Beverly's son. And it turns son. out that it's Beverly's son. And but also, who knows who the dad is? I have a feeling it's probably Picard, though. They didn't bang, though. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. It's gonna be retcon that they did right before she left. Oh, okay. But basically, this kid is old enough that he could be like 20 or 21, which means that they might have had it. It also could be the case that, that she had the kid after they split up. I am 100% telling you right now that it's gonna be Picard's kid yeah. who and the. Ha- they just stole his DNA or something? No, part, no, she got pregnant. Part of the reason that she left is because they had like a, like a, we're going to get back together bang. And so, then they didn't. And she left, so but was they're, pregnant. So they're just doing the exact story that, that they did with Kirk. Yes. Where Kirk had like a random son from like a yes. scientist woman. 100% that's going to be. Do you think he's going to get get killed like Kirk's son did? Maybe. <laughs> is this the same story? <laughs> yes. Maybe. Okay, here's the thing though. What's really weird about it is that this kid has to be at least 20 years younger than Wesley. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's a that's a weird feeling to and have it's like, there. wow, ima- imagine, like, having a sibling that is, like, 20 or 25 years older than you. Like, holy fuck. For a while, I actually thought, like, is this just going to be Wesley with, like, like, de-aged? Did he go with, like, a de-aging machine? Or did he, like, did he get, like, m- like plastic surgery done? He's like, no, it's probably a new kid. It's probably it's a new a kid. It's a new kid, 100%. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't think Wesley would have attacked Will like that. Though it would be good to see Wesley get bitch slapped. Because <laughs> Will just fucking smacks him. You mean, you mean Will Wheaton get bitch slapped? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like how whenever, like, Will Wheaton has a bad take on Twitter, people just spam him with, shut up, Wesley. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> it's really fucking funny. Uh, yeah, that's pretty funly, funny. 
Yeah. Funly. Funly. <laughs> Funly funny. That's my name. That's, Don't wear the, it out. But that's the end of the show because the, it, uh, of not the Will episode. Wheaton. Yeah. No, <laughs> not Wesley Crusher is like, hey, by the way, guys, look out the window. And they look out. And it's like this giant fucking ship that's meant to be really intimidating. But I'm like, listen, we've seen this with the scimitar. In, in, was it was at Nemesis or Insurrection. We've seen this with the with the Romulan mining ship and the reboot. There's there's been a lot of Star Trek villain ships where they come out of the nebula and it's like da da da, and it's like a central pod with like a, a bunch of like spiky bits pointing forward off the sides to, to make it look like, like it's a claw or yeah. a yeah yeah it's like okay I get it you're trying to be intimidating but we've seen this in Star Trek so many times now this exact fucking ship yeah it's like okay yep. Didn't, cool. didn't matter. Yeah. So like, clearly this episode, that, that's the end of the episode. Um, clearly the episode is meant to be, is like, is like a setup episode. Yes. Like, we're not going to get any of these questions answered no, right away. Not yet. Um, and it feels like they were the, uh, for, for this episode and the season, they're like, listen, we know we fucked up, dude. Can you please just give us another chance? Yeah. And the reason it feels like that is because one, there's so many old lore call callbacks. Oh, wait, we forgot all about. Uh, Raffi. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Raffi has a Raffi has a completely a completely unconnected story. Yep. So Raffi's yep. like an, an undercover officer somewhere. Somewhere, on some like on some like party planet because every planet is just like the party planet or the ice planet or yep. the city planet or whatever. It's the bad city planet. The, the fire planet. Where, where the bad Orions hang. The out. desert planet. Yep. Yeah. So she's like undercover. She gets information about an incoming terrorist attack. And she's like, what, what the fuck does this mean, dude? Now, and she's talking to, like, either an AI or a person with, like, a coded voice or something. No, no, she's she's talking to a secret handler. That's what yeah. they said. Yeah. Because she's part of Starfleet Intelligence, and Starfleet Intelligence is, like, doesn't want to reveal who they are to her. Well, the handler doesn't. The handler doesn't, because yeah. it's, like, it's undercover, right? Yeah. And Rafi's like, listen, dude, there's something, something big is going to happen. They, they, they stole this experimental portal technology. It's literally just portals from the game Portal. You open up two <laughs> fucking portals, you can walk through. It's like, that's what it is, all right? But it's really big. <laughs> And she, like, flies into... It's not Earth. It's, like, a different planet. Yeah. And she flies... There's, like, a Federation, like, city on a different planet. And she flies down. And she's like, guys, uh... There's, like, there's like a Starfleet base there. And she's like, listen, guys, uh, you're gonna get fucked. There's a terrorist attack incoming. I need to talk to someone. Like, several times, the words, I need to talk to someone right now. Like, no Starfleet clo codes or anything. Just, like, screaming into the PA. I need to talk because she, to someone. Because Raffi is fucking incompetent. Yeah. And always has been. Yeah. And, and then... then... <laughs> and then she watches, like, a portal open up underneath the building. Yeah. And the entire building falls into the portal. Yeah. The portal opens right above the building to the right. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, on it's like one so, city block over. Yeah, so it yeah. doesn't even, like, it's not even in another part of, like, the city, like, somewhere, like, especially, like, oh, God, there's there's an orphanage here. We gotta <laughs> save the children. No, it's just like, oh, and here's the building, boom. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, and the building just, like, <laughs> falls onto the street. Yep. And, like, it's it's clearly, like, a big fucking disaster. There's probably a lot of people who died. There was a lot of screaming. Yeah. Yeah. But then... Which is kind of funny because she's like, Ra how did Rafi hear that? She's in her ship. She's above the city. She's like watching this. And you're also, even the camera's really far away from it. Yeah. Like, but basically there was a, also, what would be screaming? They're all like dead. Well, the people around, the people who didn't get squished. <laughs> to be fair, I actually watched, because I watched this, the episode twice. Yes. Once on my own, once yeah. with you. And I watched, like the second time through, I watched all the little cars driving around the city. Mm -hmm. And like, they, they, did, they did a decent job with, with detail because like cars that were approaching the disaster stopped. Mm -hmm. And like cars that were on the way away, like sped up. Oh, that's and I was like, cool. like yeah, they, nice they, they actually detail. made it look like it was nice. Yeah, yeah. I, that, that was like their big effect shot for the episode. Yeah, I I do always appreciate when uh the a show will go like in depth and far away shots. Yeah. Even even if you don't notice them on a first watch, mm -hmm. you notice them. You'll notice them on like a second or third, and be yeah. like, oh, that's neat. Like I, it does it definitely boost points in the yeah. how much do I like the show skill. Yeah. Yeah. So this Starfleet outpost or whatever is destroyed and Rafi's like oh my god she just, didn't know, she, doesn't she just start crying kind of I don't remember kind of her reaction was very kind of blasé well she's not a very good actress to be honest she's, well, no, she's fucked up everything the no, entire show no listen I actually think that the actress is pretty good oh it's yeah it's just the character was really bad oh okay <laughs> like, that's what it no, was no I legit like she cause she's done good because like she isn't like she isn't like a Kristen Stewart where like she just hasn't had any like facial changes or anything. Apparently she's actually a good actress too. It's just the Twilight sucked. No, because I saw her in um Snow White. There there was a Snow White movie with Kristen Stewart Is as there? Snow White. Yeah, like okay. it was it was like a Snow White like not a parody, not cuz of comedy, but like a a shitty one. 
<laughs> sure. I don't even remember. But she was in that. I'm like, she's just doing the same thing with her face. Oh, okay. Apparently, okay, yeah. though, she has a new movie, I think, about some. It has to, something to do with British royalty. And she looks pretty good in that. I saw different emotions on her face. And I was like, oh, shit. For the first fucking time. <laughs> like, I, she I, experienced emotion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she experienced emotion other times. But, like, in, in the very few things I've seen her in, mm -hmm. I haven't really seen her face change very much. Right, right. But anyway, like, it's not. The rap, Raffi's actress is not, like, doing that. And she's not only just doing one thing. Like, she has different. Like, she has, like. She's very hammy. Well, yeah, but like the character is hammy. Yeah. You know, like this character is like a like a semi crazed, like drug addict who is not a drug addict at the moment, but at least was. You know, and it yeah. has like it's fucked up her family life, it's fucked up her work life, like and just like is a very very emotional person. Yep. Like emotional reacting person first. Yep. But I actually thought that her reaction to the, like. The disaster. Uh, the disaster was very just like and tears because like she was just getting really frustrated with not being able to figure out like what yeah. was happening. The issue with with Rafi's story is that it's completely disconnected and separate from the At rest of the story. The moment it yeah. is, there's no crossover scenes. No, there's even... definitely gonna be. Oh, of course there's. Of course yeah. there's. But like the main cast doesn't even mention Rafi. Yeah. No one knows what she's doing. No one cares. Oh, you know what? I bet it is. What? I bet that the aliens who are attacking Beverly's ship are also the ones who have that portal technology. Well, of course, yeah. 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 That's that's gonna be what the connection is. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But anyway, um. The episode itself, not very good, nah. but at least not offensively bad. <laughs> no, yeah. It's not as bad as Picard seasons one and two, and that's like high praise for this. That's why it's show. getting so such high marks on yeah. Rotten Tomatoes. Well, also because everyone's like, oh my God, everyone's back. Beverly Crusher's back. Well, here's the thing. So they expelled all the cast of season one and two. Except because for Rafi. Seven of nine and Rafi. That's yeah. it. And Rafi's, oh, and um, Rafi's a new Lai... character. What's her name? The housekeeper? Oh, um, Laris. Yeah, Laris. And yeah. Laris. Those are the only three we see. And I have a feeling that Laris is also going to be out for the season. She's not going to show back no, up. No, of course she will. No. Maybe at the very end. Listen, she wasn't in season two at all. She was a different character. Yeah, but they still had the, the actress. Yeah, I know, yeah. but still, it wasn't And in Laris. season one, she was there for half the season. Yeah, but that's because she had to protect Picard. Yeah. For a little bit. And she wasn't there that much. Mm. Just when he went back to the chateau... She wasn't there that much. You're, you're, I think. No, you're no, no, because wrong. Picard spent, like, before, he was in the Chateau for, like, four out of ten episodes of season one. Yeah, well, that's because the robot girl, spoilers, would, you know, was, had to rest and heal and not be attacked. No, I know, there was, there was reasons for her, but no, Laris was around for a good chunk of season one, and yeah. she came back at the end of season one, too. Yeah. Um, but no, here, let me, let me, hmm, let me put it this way, let me put it this way, okay? Um, all the characters were so annoying from season one and two. Yep. All the new characters. And they had, they basically had concluded all of their stories. Even though the conclusions were terrible and the stories were terrible, yep. they were done. Yep. So they just kicked all of them out. Yep. And they're like, fuck it. As, as I mentioned before, they, they really wanted this to be like the worst story show. So they brought back all the regulars from TNG as main. Worst story season. Yeah. Well, still, this is, gonna be the main, this is it's still the worst story show of the season. But anyway, um, they brought back all the regulars of TNG. So Worf's going to be in it and that that that's got already been announced. Yes. Yeah. He's not in it yet. But we we've seen Will and Beverly Crusher, but Jordy's coming back, Worf's coming back. Um Deanna? Uh Deanna Troy's coming back. Yeah. Data's dead, but apparently his actor is playing Lore. So Lore's <laughs> coming back. Okay, I, one thing I want to say about the Star Trek universe mm -hmm. is that I love the fact that like Data and lore and all of uh, what's what's the scientist's name? I yeah, totally the Soong family. Yeah, the Soong family is all just fucking played by, by Brent, Brent Spider. Spider. <laughs> like that, that's my favorite trope of Star Trek, and it's great. Like e even in season two, Brent Spiner is like the an like ancient ancestor, still Brent Spiner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like it's great. I love it. <laughs> yep, but uh, it's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but Laura's coming back because you gotta have Brent Spiner in the show. Yeah. Apparently, Tasha Yar is coming back. I Okay, you told me she was dead. She is dead. How? Maybe Picard hallucinates her or something on his deathbed again. His, like, 15th deathbed. Who knows? Not Tasha Yar. Tasha Yar is dead. We, I meant the actress. The actress is dead, according oh, to alive. Dev. No, you told me. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You told me the actress was dead. 
One hundred percent. I said yes, the character was dead. No, you told me the oh, actress no, I didn't. was also dead. You, you, because she was the one that turned to like I'm drug use and such, such, right? No, 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 no. That was um, Kessa's actress from Voyager. She's not dead though. She's oh. she's like a drug-addled freak living oh. in like Ohio or like fucking Wyoming or something. They're both white and blonde. I mixed it up. Oh, <laughs> white blonde and short hair. <laughs> yeah. No, man, dude, Kessa's actress. Oh fuck! Like you've seen those pictures, right? Okay, no. She's yeah. like she's like running around like a fucking crack shack, exposing herself, like exposing her naked body to children Jesus. on the street. She's like driving while like fucking heroin up. Like she she's fucked. Yeah. She she was like, yeah, you know, I I had a few problems like back in 2012. She was like, I had a few problems. I get my life turned around. I'm gonna go back to school for like culinary arts. Nope. She just she's she's just she's just fucking meth. Oof. That's all she is now. That's she's just meth. She's a okay. person of meth. Okay, no, I thought Tasha Yar's, Yar's actress was dead. Nope. Okay. Denise this, Crosby's still alive. That makes more sense then. Yeah. There's going to be either time travel shenaniganery or hallucinations then. Yeah. And I have a feeling it might be hallucinations this time because they already did the time travel stick. They already did the time travel, yeah. Yeah. So it's probably hallucinations. Or maybe they'll like bring back the actress, actress but have her play that half Romulan child that she had. Oh, maybe. That is might there, be it. Is actually. there anyone else they're getting from TNG to come back? I think some side characters. Oh, uh, uh, we're, we're on the Wikipedia right now. Uh, Jack Crusher is coming back. Who's Jack? That's oh, the oh, guy. that's that's the kid. That's uh, the spoiler. Oh, I thought it was. I, well, was wasn't her husband named Jack Crusher? I'm pretty sure this, he was not. Is this Jack Crusher Jr.? Oh yeah, they're adding a couple of the Forge kids. Which is great. Yep. Oh, and they're bringing back Professor Moriarty. <gasps> The, the holodeck guy. Oh my god. They got him back for some reason. Oh, it's gonna be bad, but I'm excited, but it's gonna be it bad. It is gonna be bad. Like, he's supposed to be, I guess, a villain in this sh- uh, Why? Okay. No, he might just be there to, like, help them out, because he was just stuck in the holodeck, remember? Like, but they saved his program because he was alive. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. Instead of letting him be, like, the doctor on Voyager, they just... just yeah. Well, they didn't have, um... They didn't have, uh, um, what, what are they called? Portable, portable, um, Oh, emitters yeah, that's there? right. Yeah. Mobile emitter is what they called it. Yep. They didn't have that. There's not much to say about season three, episode one, because it's... It's just the setup, it's yeah. It's just setup. But, like... This is why we it's, probably it's, should it's, have waited to do this well, video. No, well, here's the thing. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have anything else ready for today, so this is my filler. <laughs> See, and I want to point out that I said that Dev is lazy with his work at the beginning you know of this. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Um, I am excited to see Jordy though. Yeah, I'll say Apparently that. Apparently the visor's gone. He has eyes now. Yeah, but there w- it was always an option for him to have eyes. It was, but he, but remember, yeah. he, remember he said, "I don't want them. I like the visor." He said that like, he made he made it a part of his identity that he didn't want to get real eyes. Then he got real eyes. Okay, I do want to point out that that one is slightly more okay. Only, only, no. On- listen, they're erasing blind representation. <laughs> it's bigoted. Fine, only because. Um, he mentioned that the visor gives him headaches every single day. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm an old person, I'm already in pain. I don't want the additional pain of headaches if I can get rid of it. So. Yeah, I guess. And also, it's like way in the future. They probably, like, it's probably just visor eyes. That's what they are, yeah. Yeah, They're exactly. Visor eyes, that, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You know, like the technology. Why, why wouldn't you give everyone visor eyes, though? Because not, not everyone's comfortable with taking their eyes out. Yeah, I guess, but they're better. This is not cyberpunk. This doesn't yeah. happen that often. Yeah. I think there's like a, there's an idea that in, in Trek, at least there's this idea that the reason humans don't augment their body all the time, even though they could, is because it's they're partially illegal. Uh, no, no, it's not because well, they, they give Nog a fake leg after the Dominion War. Yeah, because he lost his, his leg. But, he lost his actual well, leg. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. They basically say. We don't feel this need anymore to constantly like improve ourselves. We're comfortable the way that we are. We, yeah. And, and they, they, they play it off as some sort of maturity where like humanity has grown up. They're not vain anymore. You know, they're not greedy anymore. So they don't feel the need to like replace their body with, with robot parts all the time. They're, they're, they're comfortable in their own skin and they only do it if they have to. Yeah. So it's become like a, it's almost like, like a, a moral component of their society that they're, they're not doing the cyberpunk thing. Yeah. I think. I have a feeling that the morality is probably based around plastic surgery, you know? So, so? Well, yeah, because, like, we're at the moment, in real life, society is not at the level of being able to comfortably replace... Body parts. Body yeah. parts with fair, much more functional 
Uh, we'll get there eventually, I think. No, but... no, we definitely will, because we're, we're getting pretty close, but the thing is, there's also, like, phantom pain and stuff, and, like, you'd have to get past that part first, and, yeah, yeah. you know, there's there's extra stuff. We're getting we're getting close. We're not there yet, though. So, mm -hmm. since we're not there yet, the only closest thing that you could associate, like, actual morality to when it comes to cyberpunk, like, stuff, mm -hmm. like, the whole replacing your body with robot parts yeah. is plastic surgery for vainness. Mm -hmm. because generally people who are not getting plastic surgery for a specific medical reason just to look better are technically being vain. I am not against plastic surgery, by the way. <laughs> I'm not. You like giant Brazilian butts right in your face? Sure, why not? <laughs> I'm attracted to Kim Kardashian, I'll say it. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done with you. Yeah, but, but like, I'm not against plastic surgery for people who want to do that, but I think that if we're just, like, especially in the 50s or 60s or whatever, like for mm -hmm. the old show, you know, like, no one's augmenting anything you could only really relate that back to probably plastic surgery. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Of course, I don't know how good plastic surgery was in the 50s to make this comparison, so maybe I'm just totally fucking wrong and I just shut up. I don't fucking know. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah. It, it probably stems from that, mm -hmm. and then, you know, cyberpunk's a slightly more newish thing. Well, in terms more of... mainstream newish thing. In terms of Picard, though. Yeah. It's not a good show. No. I wouldn't recommend anyone watch it. Nobody should watch it. Uh... The, the there's there's nothing really like good about it, frankly. I don't I didn't enjoy watching it. I didn't I don't think that like there's there's lore callbacks, but I, I it's cheap. It it feels cheap. Everything does not <laughs> nothing nothing in the show is good. The only the only plus that I can give this this show is that it's not Picard seasons one and two. Yeah, that's it. It's still a bad show. Everything's still negative. I still wouldn't watch it if I was on my own. No. I would not have missed anything in my life if I'd never watched this. I have heard some people say that they did the reset button on season three so cleanly mm -hmm. that if you just went from like Nemesis and Insurrection yep. to Picard season three, yep, you wouldn't have missed anything. You wouldn't have missed anything nope. because nothing that happens yep. in seasons yep. one and two really matter that Which much. Which is a really bad episode. Like, that's a, such a bad show yeah. take. Like, but, oh, yeah, you can just skip. The first two seasons of the show, and it didn't want to mean anything. It's fine. I'm yep. just like, wow, that's C just sad. Because none of the lore stuck. None of the characters stuck around except for well, Raffi. Except for Raffi, yeah. yeah. But she, the, it, her character can just be explained away by, oh, she's in intelligence. Obviously yeah. has a, like, obviously was a drug addict. Yeah, because she drops the drugs and the... Yeah, the like, there, there, yeah. there's... there's uh, you know what I'll say? Uh, For that moment of, since I'm watching House currently, I'm binge-watching watching Dr. House. Yeah. Um... They they did the her like looking at the drugs and like dropping them and like I think she was was she still holding drugs in the ship? No. No. Okay. So she dropped the drugs that she definitely kind of wanted to take and they did that moment very well. Mm -hmm. I enjoy that. I was like, is she gonna do it? Because I wasn't sure. Because like with a lot of Picard, as soon as a character encounters a crossroads like that, I can almost instantly be like, they're gonna do that, and then they do, and I'm always right, mm -hmm. which is a really like I'm not smart, so this is like that's a really bad <laughs> sign of a show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can just immediately tell what a character is going to do when they come to a crossroads and they don't surprise me. Yep. You know, but they did that moment very well. Like. She definitely she dropped it, but it was a very uncertain moment. Mm -hmm. So I th I think they might do that storyline a bit better than what they currently were doing. Because in season two, it wasn't an issue at all. I think she was over it, yeah. Yeah, but now she's not. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, so that's bad. But if you forget about season two, that is fine. <laughs> you can forget about season one. You can forget about the entire show. Yeah. Well, think, no, actually, because... If you forget that all the card... <laughs> existed your life will probably be better your life will be better yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> so i guess that's that's what happened in, in season in in season three episode one um it's it's still not good no that's it's still not good. i'm still not enjoying watching the show but it's not it's I not <laughs> i'm now enjoying it yeah no i i legitimately have been so scarred by season one and two of picard that like my bad like levels of is media bad are actually ruined anything yeah. that is not as bad as season two picard and was like it's good i can watch this it's great like 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 with velma yeah i can watch this it's fine i have been ruined and it's your fault oh it's my fault yes you made me watch it i would not have watched it otherwise i'd have watched a couple a few episodes of picard season one and been like fuck this show i hate everything 
I don't want to watch Star Trek stuff for a while now. <laughs> and no, because of you, I've been fucking ruined. And you've been kind of ruined too. <laughs> and it's well, all your fault. <laughs> it's also Picard's fault. But yeah. it's all your fault for making me watch it. <laughs> ah, that's okay. We, we're going to get a good video out of it one day. I don't yeah. No. You'll get a good video. I will just be ruined with nothing to show for it. <laughs> I'll put you in the video. Don't watch. Don't watch Picard. <laughs> don't do it. It's bad. <laughs>